Hello everyone, welcome back to AS Biology with Dr. Demi. I am Dr. Demi and this is the last chapter of the AS Biology syllabus, which means that this is the chapter after which I will not be recording any more videos, except there is a need for an explainer video to help you with your revision or preparation for your exams. The last chapter of the AS Biology syllabus is immunity and basically discusses how the body fights infection. You will also learn in this chapter how vaccinations work and how we are able to make antibodies through a monoclonal method. Uh, but don't stress too much about all of that information for now. Just revel in the fact that you have made it this far and we are now close to the end or rather we are at the beginning of the end of the AS biology syllabus. In this video, I am going to focus more on phagocytosis um, and basically discuss the phagocytes in immunity and when we get to the next video we will discuss the lymphocytes and the roles that they play in helping your body fight infections so let's get into it so how does your body defend you and this is something that many students ask me in class uh, why is the body the way it is and i often tell them that your body is designed to keep you alive the whole point of your body when it gets sick um, when you feel tired when you have a headache and you need to lie down or when you feel really thirsty and you need to drink some water all of these are signals that your body sends out in the bid to keep you alive because it's simply saying take an action that is corrective so that this doesn't become worse than it currently is. But according to your syllabus, there are external defense systems and internal defense systems. Now, when you look at the external defense systems, they pretty much look very internal because these are not things that you see just on the outside of your body. You don't see them on your skin. So for example, the epithelial cells that cover your airways and prevent um, mucus, um, not mucus, prevent particles or microbes from being able to get through to your lungs, um, that's considered a defense system. The hydrochloric acid in your stomach. So if you didn't know, your stomach contains hydrochloric acid and that can help to kill off any bacteria or a microbe that is not able to survive in an acidic environment. You also have your platelets that aid with the clotting of blood. Um, those are also your external defense systems, interestingly, even though they are in your blood. And the reason why these are important is that they prevent you from bleeding out. Now, if you remember in one of the previous videos, I had mentioned that each person only has about five liters of blood. So it is very important that if you have an injury, you have to have platelets that ensure that your blood clots so that you don't bleed out. The internal defense system is the part that this chapter focuses on because it really focuses on the actions of your white blood cells. Now, remember that your red blood cells are really important for carrying hemoglobin, which is then important for transferring or transporting oxygen around the blood or around the body. The white blood cells have a very different function. They are the soldiers of the body. They are the ones that fight off infection. And there are two types of white blood cells that you would find you would find the phagocytes and you would find the lymphocytes and these two groups of cells play a very important role in ensuring that you fight off an infection and you come out of it unscathed as much as possible Before we get into the detail of how these cells work, um, we're just going to go through some definitions. So one definition is what is called an antigen. An antigen is a molecule which the body recognizes as foreign. And when I discuss this in class, I like to show students um, using like a drawing so that they're just able to see what an antigen might look like. So let's say this is a cell in your body and all the cells in your body, let's say, have this shape on top of them. Right. So they all have this shape, which means that when they see each other, they know that, okay, yeah, you belong here. You're one of us. Now, an antigen would be something that looks very different from that. So let's say, I'm just going to use a blue pen this time around to draw the antigen. So let's say this is the antigen that's coming in. And instead of these um, inverted U shapes on its surface, it has very long spikes, um, very much like the... Um, 
like the COVID-19 um, virus. So it has very long spikes. So certainly when this comes into the body, the body is able to recognize that, wait a minute, this doesn't look like any of us. First of all, it has spikes and we don't do spikes. And that way the body is able to recognize it as foreign. The other thing that you should know are the, def are the things we call the antibodies. The antibodies are basically glycoprotein molecules that are produced to fight infection. And you will see as we go along why these are important in fighting infections. Antibodies are really important because they help you to sort of address an antigen. So they're able to act against specific antigens. And that way, um, your body is then able to say, oh, okay, well, these antibodies already exist. So if the same antigens come again the antibodies are able to attack it in more detail but I'll go into that later on you also have your cell surface antigens and again those are the antigens that you find on the surface of your own cells um, and they're not found on the surface of other organism cells or even other humans uh, for example if you think of the blood groups when we say that in blood groups we have um, four different types we have a we have B we have A, B, and we have O. These four blood groups each have different antigens. So the antigens for A might be something very different. Maybe it looks something like that. The antigen for B perhaps look like that. The antigen for A, B is a combination of the two and O apparently doesn't have any antigens. And the point of it is that it then determines who you can take blood from. So if, for example, you have antigen A on your blood cells, you can't go and take um, blood from someone who is antigen B because they have an inverted U as their um, as their antigen cell surface antigen while you have something that looks like an incomplete rectangle so that again determines who you take blood from so antigens are very important you also have the immune response which is more or less the response of the lymphocytes I often say it's the response of the white blood cells to the presence of an antigen a foreign antigen that is but as we go along you will learn this in more detail so the cells of the immune system, we have two different types, just like we said earlier. You can either have phagocytes, not either, you have phagocytes and you have lymphocytes. There are two types of phagocytes that you have to know. Those are the neutrophils and the macrophages. The lymphocytes, you can either have a B lymphocyte or you can have a T lymphocyte. Sometimes these are called B cells or they are called T cells. But obviously as we go along, you will get used to the lingo and you would be able to determine when a B cell, if they say a B cell, you would easily know that that means a B lymphocyte. In this video, we are going to focus only on the phagocytes, just discussing the neutrophils, the macrophages, and how they act whenever there is an invasion in the body. Something to know about the phagocytes is that they are constantly produced in your bone marrow. They play a very important role in removing dead cells, so you can consider them to be scavengers or more or less the vultures of the, of the body, and they also remove invasive microorganisms. So if by some chance a microorganism finds its way into your blood, the phagocytes are always at alert to remove that invasive organism. Now let's go into the neutrophils. The neutrophils make up about 60% of the phagocytes and something interesting about them is that they are very short-lived cells uh, which means that they don't live for long and again this would explain why the bone marrow makes a lot of phagocytes continuously. The neutrophils they, they basically travel throughout the body and they're like patrol cells so think of your neighborhood security guard um, who always drives around in his car just checking that everyone's gates are closed no one is um, roaming around the streets or trying to break into anyone's um, house uh, so the neutrophils are sort of like that they patrol the tissues and whenever you have a, a an infection they are produced in very large numbers and we're going to see why that is 
You also have the macrophages. The macrophages are larger than the neutrophils, so they make up about 40% of the phagocytes. You would mostly find them in the lungs and the liver, the spleen, the kidney, and you'd also find them in the lymph nodes. They travel through the blood as monocytes. So think of monocytes as cells that are yet to fully develop. And as they travel, once they're released from the bone marrow, they grow into macrophages. They live really long and they are able to initiate immune responses. So what macrophages do, they are a little bit more violent than your um, neutrophils. Macrophages actually take invasive antigens. So they take an invasive microorganism, for example, and they cut it open so that the other immune cells can come and study that invasive microorganism and say, oh, so this is what it looks like. And then they develop a defense mechanism against it. So it is very exciting if you think of them as soldiers. The neutrophils are are produced in abundance. The macrophages seem to be produced in a lesser amount, but they are more aggressive than the neutrophils are. So what happens when pathogens invade your body and cause an infection? Now, when a pathogen invades your body, and when I say pathogen, you always need to bear in mind that a pathogen doesn't necessarily mean a microorganism. It can also just be pollens that you are allergic to because the body would regard those as foreign anyway, and it would elicit an immune response. So when these invade your body, what some cells will do in the body at the site of invasion, or should we call it the site of infection, is they release chemicals like histamine. Now, histamine in in this regard is simply there to serve as a signal. So think of it, for example, as you live in a neighborhood, a gated community, you have panic buttons um, and you have um, people on patrol, security on patrol around the neighborhood. But let's say for some reason, something breaches your fence in the middle of the night. That sets off an alarm that is then got, that then goes off at the security office. That alarm going off will then attract the security guards to your house because it says, okay, well, the alarm went off at our office, so we just want to see what's going on. In the same way, when pathogens invade your body, some of the cells will send out chemicals like histamine, and histamine will simply cause the neutrophils on patrol to cluster towards the infection site. So histamine is basically saying there's a problem over here, we need the neutrophils to show up. This is what we call chemotaxis or chemotaxis, depending on how you pronounce it. Chemotaxis simply means chemical movement, and it means that the chemicals cause a certain movement towards the infection site. Once the neutrophils get towards the infection site, they then surround the pathogens. In most cases, the pathogens are usually clustered together and they've even been surrounded by antibodies before the neutrophils arrive. What the neutrophils will then do is they will engulf these pathogens that have been clustered together and in some cases covered with antibodies. They engulf the pathogens and then they trap them in what we call a phagocytic vacuole. The phagocytic vacuole is one place where the pathogens will never escape from because once they are trapped in there, the neutrophils will then release digestive enzymes into the vacuole and the enzymes will destroy the pathogens. Once the pathogens are killed, the neutrophils themselves will die and they collect at the site of infection as pus. So if you think of your regular pimple, for example, Sometimes you get a pimple on your face, probably because you've touched something dirty and then you've put your hands on your face. So you get um, infections there, but you can consider a pimple a site of infection. So now you have these um, microbes that have been able to get under the skin. There has been some chemotaxis, the neutrophils have clustered there. They surround um, the pathogen, which then causes the swelling you see as a pimple and it becomes red and it's painful. But after a while, you start to notice that the, people's, the pimple softens, it's less painful, and you can press out the pus if you're into something like that. The pus then represents the dead neutrophils. Neutrophils. And this again is why neutrophils have to be constantly produced because after they fight an infection, they die at the site of infection. This is just an image and this is the last slide for this video showing you how um, the different stages of phagocytosis happen. So you can see here, let's say we are dealing with a bacteria, that bacteria becomes trapped in there and it is then um, held in the phagocytic vacuole, which is sometimes called a phagosome. 
yeah um, and the phagosome will then fuse with lysosomes if you remember from chapter one the lysosomes are known for secreting digestive enzymes the digestive enzymes will get into the phagosome and they would break apart the um, the pieces of the they will break apart the bacteria that has been trapped in there and they digest it and the products of digestion would then be released out of the cell they are less harmful and they can be cleaned up by other um, other organelles within the body so that is the end of phagocytosis and the end of the very first section of chapter 11. If you have any questions, please post them in the chat, um, in the comment section rather, and I will get back to you with a response as soon as possible. Look out for the next video where I discuss the lymphocytes. Thank you.